Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, you will learn how to visualize exponential time complexity by examining recursive Fibonacci. So we'll start by examining this recursive implementation of Fibonacci. So let's imagine that we pass the number four to our Fib function. So at this point, four is our value for n. So after we call this function, we'll end up at our first if block. And this if block just returns zero if n equals zero. And then we move on to a second if block. And this second if block just returns one if n equals one. So once we pass the number four into our function, we'll end up at this first if block. And both of these if blocks are base cases because as we know with recursive functions, we need to have a base case so that the function doesn't continue to call itself even after we're finished. And if you're unfamiliar with Fibonacci and how it works, I have a video that offers a deep understanding of recursion in Fibonacci that you can access by clicking the link currently displayed on your screen. So back to our function call. So we pass the four into our fib function and four is not equal to zero, so we, we don't return zero and four is not equal to one, so we don't return one. So we end up here. And what this return does is it adds together the result of two more calls to the Fibonacci function. This first Fibonacci function, we're going to call with our n minus one, so four minus one. And this second one, we're going to call with our n minus two, so four minus two. So let's have a look at what that looks like. And as we can see, four minus one is just equal to three. So this would actually just be three. And same for here, this would just be equal to two. So at this point, we have two calls to our, Fib our Fibonacci function, uh, one which we're passing three as our n, and one in which we're passing two as our n. So for both of these calls, neither one of these will return at these if blocks. So we'll end up back down here again, which will look like this. And again, we can just do the math in the parentheses. And let me just make this a little bit smaller. So at this point, for these three calls to the Fibonacci function, we're going to reach our base case because we're passing zero for this call and we're going to just return zero at that point. And we're passing one for these two calls and we're going to just return one at those points. So these are going to be complete. These ones are done. And for this function, we're passing two as our n, which isn't equal to zero and isn't equal to one. So at this point, we'll then again go down to this portion of the code. And now these two have reached our base cases as well. And one more time, I'll need to shrink this. So now we'll get into the reason why this recursive Fibonacci function is an exponential function. First, let's start by observing this recursive tree structure. So as we can see here, we have one, two, and three levels to this recursive tree structure. So we can write that out, level one, level two, and level three. And for this first level here, we're calling the fib function two times. So one, two. And for this second level, we call our fib function four times. One, two, three, four. So this level, we make two calls to the Fibonacci function. In this level, we make four calls to the Fibonacci function. And let's just ignore this third level for now. And let's just focus on these top two levels. So two here is the same as two to the power of one. And four here is the same as two to the power of two. And as you can see, our exponents correlate with our levels. So actually, if these three functions were to make their two additional calls to recursive Fibonacci, we would have something that looks like this. So we have two calls here, two calls here, and two calls here. So we'll just write this out. So 
So let's imagine that these are also additional calls to the recursive Fibonacci function. And let's just imagine that that's the case for one second, just so that we can get a better understanding of why this function is of exponential time complexity. So now if we count the calls at this third level to our recursive Fibonacci function, and keep in mind that these calls won't actually be made, only these ones will be made, but we're just writing this out so that we can get a better visualization of what's happening here. So if we counted out these calls to the Fibonacci function, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we would have 8 calls at this third level. And 8 is the same as 2 cubed, or 2 to the power of 3. And as you see, once again, our exponent corresponds with our level. So that means that if our n is 4, we would go 3 levels deep, and at each level, the number of calls to our Fibonacci function increases exponentially. But you might be wondering, since our n is 4, and we stop here when it's 2 to the power of 3 as opposed to 2 to the power of 4, how does that result in this function being O of 2 to the n? Well, it's actually quite simple. So in actuality, this Fibonacci function is O of 2 to the n minus 1. And if we write this out, you can see it's O of 2 to the 4th power minus 1, which is just equal to O of 2 to the 3rd power, which is the same as the number of calls made at this third level, right? And if you remember, in big O, we ignore constants. So if in actuality this function is O of 2 to the nth power minus 1, and we ignore the constants, that means that we're going to ignore this minus 1, which results in the time complexity of this function being O of 2 to the n. And at this point, you're probably wondering how we're able to add these function calls in here. And in actuality, I only added these function calls in here to give you guys a better visualization of what's happening at each level and why we're considering this function to be O of 2 to the nth power, because it's easier to visualize if we actually write out these functions that we're actually not calling. And we can do that because with big O, as we've learned, we're only looking for an upper bound. Like we're not looking for a tight bound. We're not looking to be very specific. We're only looking for, you can say, an estimation of the worst case scenario. So as you can see here, on this left function, we're calling fib and then we're subtracting one from n. And on this right one, we're calling fib and then we're subtracting two from n. So this right side of the tree is always going to be shorter than this left side of the tree. There's always going to be this empty space because on this right side of the tree, at every level we're subtracting 2, and at this left side of the tree, at every level we're subtracting 1. But when we're taking big O into consideration, we don't need to worry about this. And regardless of what number we pass into this function, at the bottom most level, there's always going to be a gap on this right side, but that's okay because we're only looking for an upper bound. So these are just here to help you visualize what is actually happening and why this function is considered to be of exponential growth. And that is why recursive Fibonacci is of exponential time complexity. I hope that makes sense.